Hi, I'm Terrell Turner, the host of the Business Talk Library, and today I have a great guest on because one of the topics that is very, very important and very big for a lot of entrepreneurs is, you know what, how do you really build a business around your skill set? Because I run into a lot of business owners that they have a specialized skill set or an artistic skill set, and they struggle when it comes down to the business side. And I brought someone on that has a lot of experience in that area and working with business owners in that space. She's also a director of the Bahamas Chamber of Commerce. She's been in the marketing space for over two decades. So I am definitely excited to bring Roy Ann on the show. Welcome to the show. Hi, Terrell. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I've given a little bit of the highlights of you know, your background. Can you, you know, before we jump into the details of, like I said, of, of really, you know, specialized service businesses and talking about, you know, your experience, you know, tell us a little bit about your background and just kind of, you know, how you got into what you do now. Sure. Um, so my background is, a I guess, a little bit of a mix between a very traditional background and then I took a left somewhere and that's how I ended up here. <laughs> so um, I have a, a undergraduate degree in, in business with a concentration in, in marketing. So my education is based on uh, consumer, consumer goods related to marketing. Um, and I worked in marketing for a few years um, for Heineken and um, in the Bahamas for Heineken as well. So I have a, a strong corporate background in marketing. And after my kind of corporate stint, I also worked in advertising right after graduation. So very heavy on the creative side, uh, very heavy on this kind of consumer driven marketing, messaging, branding, all of those things. And after Heineken, I started a company and I was working in that company in marketing and kind of in that same kind of consumer driven focus. And I became interested in, okay, how else can I expand what I'm doing. And so I went back to school full time to study a degree that I had never heard of. Um, but I thought, okay, what are the two areas of interest for me? And so this is where I kind of take an, a little bit of a non-traditional path because while uh, you know I have an undergraduate degree in business, I am really like a creative person. Um, and in particular, I love visual arts. Like I love that painting behind you. You know, you can see I have some artwork behind me as well. So I thought about what can I do to merge these two likes that I have into a degree. And so I did a degree in design management. And essentially what design management is, is it's looking at design as a, a business strategy. So looking at design as a way to add value to an organization and studying different types of design, studying the way that design functions as a tool, all of those things. And along the way, I did a lot of uh, work about um, the creative economy um, and understand the experience economy. And I did my thesis in visual storytelling. And that was related to how companies can make money and even more profit than, than companies that advertise. If they don't advertise, but they do a very good job of telling a story with a cohesive narrative in the place of business or, or online. So that led me to where I am today. So today, my company, Onward Advisors, is a full service digital solutions, communications, and design. So it brings together these two areas that I, that I love, that's business and communications and branding and marketing, um, in addition to a, a more recent interest, which is in a digital space. So uh, I developed an interest in digital transformation because I started seeing it more and more a few years ago. And so I developed a, three discussions of, around that area about digital transformation and creative thinking in business. And so I realized that this is, this is a trend, you know, and it's a growing trend and it really got uh, catalyzed by the pandemic last year. You know, companies realize that they have to do digital transformation and that ties into marketing and that ties into design. So that's how I ended up where I am today. So the thing that I love about it is that I'm able to merge three areas of interest into one business. And it's a business that there's, there's a need for. Mm -hmm. 
Now, you know, it's very interesting that you, when you pointed out about, you know, the marketing and that, you know, your background was a little bit more focused on like the, the consumer, consumer focus. And one of the things that I'm always curious is when someone says that they're in marketing, um, mm -hmm. is if they say, if they've studied marketing in school, does that, do they usually focus on like consumer goods or do they focus on like service base or software or are the, the, the back, the studies in university, not that specific? Well, I don't want to call my age out, but. <laughs> but uh, so I, I think it depends on what track you choose because you can select the classes that you that you like. I did study service design in both uh, undergrad and graduate uh, okay. classes. But you know you can you can focus on research, you can focus on uh, consumer behavior. Uh, so there are different areas that you can focus on and I think that now you, there's a focus on digital marketing in, in, in some areas as well because, if you look at the changing role of CMOs in, in corporate marketing, that role is now more of a growth role rather than just a purely traditional marketing role. So there's a digital component to that. There's a tech component to that. So I imagine that if you're in school now or you've graduated within the, within the past uh, five to 10 years from university, you're studying a broader range of, of marketing because that role has changed tremendously. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, okay. Now, one of the things that I'm also curious is, you know, when it comes down to, you know, being artistic and, and how you come across, you know, different people that start a business in the realm of being very creative is do they tend to have a challenge with grasping the consumer's perspective and how they market what they do? Yeah. So, it's funny, and that's what's interesting about marketing because people in marketing, you have to be creative, first of all, uh, but you still need to understand business because at the end of the day, you're, you're, the purpose of your marketing, you need to be able to quantify your results and they're also qualitative results, right? But the idea is that you have to connect to whoever your, your end user is. So whether that's B2B or B2C, you've got to connect with somebody. So that creative side is very important. But if you're looking at uh, uh, somebody who's, let's say like a, a pure creative, like somebody who's a fine artist and they think about, okay, can I, can I do marketing? So yes, but there, there's a line with that because if you are a creative person and you have something to sell, somebody needs to buy it, <laughs> right? <laughs> so it has to be something where you're able to connect to a target audience. And it depends on, on how, on how, on what you're making, how you're making it and how tuned in you are to where the market is, you know, and you may be a creative genius and create something that nobody's ever seen of, nobody's heard, but they see it one time and all of a sudden, boom, they, they love it. But even if they don't love it, that's also something to do with marketing because one of the things that you learn about consumer behavior is that marketing, you know, for lack of a better word, it actually kind of manipulates that behavior. So the more you see something, um, the more you want it. The more you hear about something, the more curious you are about it. If you see somebody cool in your circle and you're in your world and they're wearing it, you want it. And that's why influencer marketing is so amazing. So you could have somebody that's creative uh, and if they're able to tap into something special or have somebody in marketing work with them to connect that, then, you know, they can, they can win that way. You know, and I think that's an interesting one because I've had some people that, that are, uh, that, that are very creative and they'll come up with something and they'll say that, oh, oh, no one liked it. So that means, you know, it must be bad. But I think that's an interesting point of, you know, like I said, marketing, sometimes it's, you know, maybe it's the way you market it or how you connected what you did to the consumers. Yeah, I mean, I always look at, at the example of, I mean, no shade whatsoever, but would people think Yeezys were cool if they weren't from Kanye? <laughs> you know, yes. like, would you pay five grand or whatever, or a thousand or, or whatever it is 
um, for Yeezys if it wasn't attached to Kanye West and there wasn't this persona attached to that brand. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that is a really good point because I've been reading a book uh, called Influence and, you know, it's marketing is not my my background. My background is accounting and finance. And as I start to read it more and, and really understand, like, man, there is so much psychology that goes into marketing. <laughs> yeah. And even as I start to, to learn about different things, I'm like, oh, that's why I bought that thing. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's even more than psychology. You know, there's an area of marketing called uh, neuromarketing. And so there are prompts or appeals to different parts of your brain. So, for example, if you go into, you, you, you want to buy, you go into a store and you see new on sale, you know, and there's like the price is like in the sticker that's like, wow, amazing. That prompts a certain part of your brain. If it is a call to action where it's just like, you need to get this now because they're going fast. That's a call to another part of your brain. If you see something else and it's just like, well, you know, this is the thing that Kim Kardashian made. That's a call to another part of your brain. So there are definitely psychological uh, components to, to marketing. Now, I guess when, when you've worked with or talked and, and interacted with people that are creative, do, do you find that sometimes people feel like using some of those marketing approaches, you know, I guess devalue some of their, their, their creativity? Um, yeah, I mean, I think this is a discussion that fine artists have. You know, that's sort of the idea behind like, the, like a fine artist that somebody would say sold out. But I don't see it that way. I feel like the artists that do a really good job with commercial success, they understand, they understand the balance. They understand that, you know, they have to figure out like what their main goal is. is their main goal to make work that they like and nobody else likes and therefore they're not selling it? Or is their goal to make work that they like that other people like, and that is commercially viable. You know, and maybe there's a balance, there's a balance of both. But, you know, in, in each of these things, in each of these areas, there are, let's say gatekeepers that say this thing is cool or this thing is not cool, especially in a creative, in a creative uh, service or in a, cre in a creative field. And in most cases, like in a consumer goods case, those gatekeepers, in a very traditional sense, they're marketers. If an influencer tells you that a product is good or a product is going to work for you or this product is amazing, this black t-shirt is definitely worth $200, that's a gatekeeper. That person is telling um, somebody who's interested in, you know, in some sort of affinity with this, with this, uh, this influencer or this t-shirt, they're like, wow, this really is cool. So I need to pay $200 for this. Gotcha. Gotcha. So now I want to learn a little bit more about what you guys are doing at Onward and, you know, who are the types of, of target clients that would be a good fit for what you're doing with your firm? Mm -hmm. So we are based in Nassau, Bahamas, um, which is a very small country. <laughs> um, and so unlike in a, in a major city, while we do have core areas of focus, those, those areas, again, are digital solutions, communications, and design. We tend to have a very broad uh, range of clients from different industries. So for example, the ideal client is a private sector, medium size, a medium sized business or medium to large private sector organization and large and, and medium and small take on relative terms because of the size of the market or uh, public sector organizations. So we've done work with um, across the board, those types of clients, private sector, uh, public sector. But in the end, these are clients that want to drive some type of behavioral change. They want to do a communication that is reinforcing a brand message, or like I mentioned, driving a um, behavioral change, but it, it is engaging an end user. So from a digital solutions perspective, that may be anything from app development to website development to digital transformation advisory services. Because at the end of the day, your transformation is about how do I make this process more efficient? How, how does it save the organization money? But how do I offer a better customer experience? 
from a communications perspective, that is communication strategy development, um, that is content development. And in the end, it is about creating that amazing customer experience, customer engagement and connection, which in the end leads to better long-term customer value. Um, and that's design. And design kind of ties these things all together. So when I mentioned about my degree, going back to learning about how design adds value to an organization and learning about different types of design, design touches everything that an organization does. So for example, in most cases, we think about branding for, for a company. That is a particular type of design um, that's visual communication. But in turn, that means that your services, if you're making a promise with how your brand looks, that means that you want to tie in a, a great customer experience and that is service design as we discussed earlier. And then you want to make sure that those operational things work. So if you're, if you're a brick and mortar and you have a great customer experience in the store, if your customer comes back to return something, what happens on the back end? How well designed is that process on the back end to smooth out that experience for that customer? So not just the brick and mortar experience, but also what's called uh, tacit design and how these kind of like silent experiences function. Awesome. So how can people get in touch with you if they're interested in working with your company? Well, the best way to do that is to visit Onward Together and it's O-N-W-R-D together.com. That is our website. You can take a look at all the services that we offer. You can learn more about our amazing team and, and what we do. Um, and if they want to get in touch with me personally, please do. I'm on LinkedIn at Royan Dean and that's R-O-Y-A-N-N-D-E-A-N. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we're in. Before we wrap up, one question I like to ask every guest that comes on is, you know, when you think about your journey and you think about your experience, what's two pieces of advice that you would share with other business owners? Wow. Two pieces of advice. I would say learn everything. Read as much as you can. Sign up for newsletters that are related to the areas of your interest. Um, just be a complete sponge like don't ever stop learning and stay curious and the second thing is to build a network and in building that network you try to meet as many people as you can uh, in your area learn as much as you can ask a lot of questions and keep those connections live for as much as you can Awesome. I love it. I love it. Well, Royanne, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate having you on in the Business Talk Library to talk about, you know, your background and talk about, like I said, that, that journey that artistic and creative individuals go through when it comes to actually building a business around your creativity. So thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me, Terrell. It was a real pleasure to be with you. Thank you for tuning in to the Business Talk Library. If you like our content, be sure to follow us on social media. And if you want to see more of our exclusive content, you can subscribe and become a member on patreon.com forward slash business talk library. Hey, the Business Talk Library is the place where business makes sense.